Aloha, and here's the secondary part of this video. So when we're using those chord substitutions and naming, what we're doing, if you're playing just this G major up here, when you take it and you play it in the secondary finger, you can alternate some of these notes. But when we get down to it, none of them really sound that great when you take off the fingers. The only one that could work would be this one, and that is your F note. And the reason why it makes sense is because it is a flat seven. Now, I remember when in the, on the keyboard, I was like doing a C, C sharp, C, D, C, D sharp, C, uh, C, E, C, F, all the way up. Well, when I went C to my flat seven, that flat seven in the key of G would have been an F. In the key of C, it would have been a B flat. So what happens is you play in every key and you learn where the notes are on the fretboard in correlation. So you could use them doing runs. So a particular run would be like a G major to a C major to a D major back to a G. Now bluesy means you would make that I used the seventh to change the tone, still a major, but it changed it. And the reason why is remember when I said the one, four, and five are major, the two, three, and the six are minor, and then the seventh is magical unto its own? What we do is we learn how to play a G major, and then we play an A minor, which will be the minor second, then B minor. I'm sorry, those were majors. G major. So what we do is we learn how to play all of our triads in each key. What we do is we associate these names. That's a G sharp major, A major, B flat major, B major, C major. And you can go all the way up and play your different forms and shapes. There are only four real different shapes. One is a major, one's a minor, one's a diminished, and one's an augmented. So today's exercise is going to show you how to get those and how to do your teeter-totters with them. Let's pick a uh, C major. To get a C major, you need a one, you need a three. <coughs> There's my one again. But my five is going to be up top there. My G, right? So C, E, and G. If I wanted a minor, I would obviously take my C, my one, I would flatten my third and keep my G the same, which gives me a C minor. If I wanted to get a C augmented, I would keep that root one, the, the major third, and then I would sharpen that five. So when I have one, one, three, five. Hear that weirdness? I could even put it up top. Rolling around my automobile. So these augmented chords are a little bit different. Still triads, just different on the ear than a major minor or a diminished. Now the diminished, let's take those. I really like diminished because it gives us the, the ability uh, let's take like A major, okay? So we're gonna bar the first, uh, second fret. We're gonna play our pinky on the fifth fret on the E string, and then our third finger on the A string of the fourth fret, giving us the same kind of feeling you would have with that G, just scooting up a whole tone. When you play this A major, you got your one, your three, your one, and your five. So to make a diminished, I wanna keep the one, but I wanna flatten the three and flatten the five. So if I keep the one, I take this three and I flatten the three. That's my one and my five. I get. And that's a diminished chord. Now we did it on the piano when I did C, D, E, F, G, A, B, diminished, C. It just so happens in the key of C major. No sharps, no flats. C, D, E, F, G, A, Well, if I was gonna go down here, let's say I did uh, 
Let's say I wanted to resolve to C, C sharp major. Well, what comes right before C sharp, uh, C sharp uh, diminished? It would be B, uh, C sharp major would be B sharp diminished. B sharp diminished is, it would have a B sharp is, B sharp is a C, so B major, B major goes to B sharp major. B sharp major is actually a C. And then I flatten my three and I flatten my five, which gives me a B sharp diminish and it resolves. Resolves to C major. You can do that in a multitude. C, C sharp diminish. If you did, uh, let's see, F. F sharp diminished resolves to G. So it's interesting when you start playing around with these, you find that the music theory we're going to be talking about revolves around the dominant, the fifth, or it revolves around the seventh, being able to use itself as a seventh of another dominant. They're just called secondary dominants. That's what help moves. The passing idea that I was trying to establish with you today is like, let's say we wanted to, let's say we're playing in the key of C. Well, when I go to G, C, D, E, F, G, G is the fifth of C. So I'm doing a C major to an A minor, so one to six. If I go to a G major, it's just the fifth. But if I go to a G major seven, it acts as a lending tone. I'm actually not playing a G major seven there. I'm actually playing an F sharp. Uh, I'm actually playing a uh, a B B diminished. So that B diminished allows me to translate back to that C. Or I could do something really cool here. Use that B diminished in a run. So C major, A minor, B diminished. And you think you're gonna go back into C? back into C here, but the next time you do that run, try playing like a D7. And then our D7, here's our D. If we have our D, how do we make a D7? We drop that down. So we've got our uh, D note here. This note right here can function as a F sharp diminished, which can resolve to G. Hear how that goes into G quail. So I can be playing in C. C, A minor, D7, uh, D7, to G. Hear how I moved that passing chord and now when I'm in G, you can either say I'm playing on the fifth of C, or if I use a chord which isn't not in the key of C, but it is in the key of G, like F sharp, I could use that as being something as a moving or a lending tone for the next series of melodies. Hope that made sense and it wasn't too long-winded. The reason why we see all chords as triads is because we manipulate them. So if we were to play a G major, and I wanted to get a G major with an augmented fifth, that in if I have a G note a B note and a D note that's a G major if I wanted to augment it I would sharpen that D and it's great music to have like a G major It's a passing tone. It's a melody movie, movie movement maker. Anywho, try your spider exercises with some fluidity this week. Keep going through, getting all the way through up to the top and repeating. When we get to this exercise of the teeter-totters, take these new chord ideas like playing uh, G major, one and two and three and four and one, G augmented three and four and G and two, 
three and four and G augmented too. Or maybe like take our G major, flatten the third and just make it a G minor. So G major on the one, keep the right hand going. G minor, keep the right hand going. G major, keep the right hand going. G minor, now watch what I'm doing over here. Now it's my second fingering. G major, keep the right hand going. G minor, Keep the right hand going, G major. Keep the right hand going, G minor. Notice how I use both different two, one finger and, and uh, I blanked out. One finger and three finger, and then two finger and four finger together. We use these in pairs. So it kind of takes concepts of the Spidey exercises and puts them over for the teeter totters. When you're doing this, you can see the one three five as major, one flat three five as a minor one flat three flat five as a diminished, and then one three sharp five as an augmented. You could do it with every chord. Come back next week and show me what chords you've popped out with. And if you didn't do that, we could go over a couple anyways. I really enjoyed seeing you as always, and I'll see you next week. Aloha.